Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. And uh, guess what? I've made a change. So I decided to start using my wooden palette. And uh, <laughs> the reason is I find it's a perfect size to fit in my fridge. So <laughs> the leftover paint I can leave on the palette to scrape off the mixed stuff. And then uh, bring the paint, uh, the paint, bring the paint on the palette out of the fridge the next day, and I can use it again. Woohoo! So I've started using the wooden palette. I quite like using the wooden palette actually. I kind of been using it and then going to the plastic one, then going back to this one. But I'm starting to, starting to feel the old school way of the wooden palette. <laughs> But you use whatever you want. The real reason is because I can put it in the fridge. Right. <laughs> it's perfect. Let's see what goes on here. Maybe I should mention the colours I've got. Behind my hand, I've got two whites. And the reason I've got two whites, I have a dry one and then I have a wetter one. So, because I've started making my own paints, <laughs> I've just had, got a bit more oil in the, the wetter one basically so it's a, a thinner paint and as you know in this technique a thin paint sticks sticks to a thicker paint um so yeah easy and we have uh well actually let's go through the colors when we're painting because <laughs> i can't see behind my hand <laughs> all right i remember now so i'm just tapping in to some white just some white on the uh, two inch brush. The uh, big old two inch brush. And I had a design idea, but um, I didn't really go with it. <laughs> a lot of my little sketches I do in my sketchbook, I don't really use them fully. Now I've got to apologize for the glare on the canvas. Uh, I didn't notice it so much when I was painting, but when I looked at the footage, I was like, oh, that glows, like, the, the light just glares on the uh, the paint. Never mind, there's nothing I could have done about it. Not now, anyway, other than paint it again. <laughs> but So I'm using the uh, white and of course, <laughs> I sneakily covered the entire canvas with Prussian blue beforehand Prussian blue and that way when we put the white on it goes blue automatically which is great because it makes it easy to create an interesting sky <laughs> so I just picked up a bit more white a bit more of the white always tap it always tap it remember what I said tap your brush like <laughs> Like you're a tap dancer and you brush your shoes. <laughs> so using little rocking motions. Little rocking motions, really. And then knocking off the excess paint using a paper towel. And that makes it easier to uh, carry on without messing the colour up too much. I can just blend away. I didn't much paint on my brush so it doesn't matter. So I like to be able to do most of my painting by not cleaning my brushes. I, I actually don't clean my brushes while I paint. I always clean them at the end when I've finished. Go outside and clean them. <laughs> I've tried different concoctions to clean brushes. Gotta be honest. Um, there is one that did work, but not amazingly. And that was, uh, it was a mixture of vegetable oil, washing up liquid, <laughs> and water. And I put it in a bottle and shook it up, and then poured it into this um, thing that I've got, where you can scrape your brush on. And, uh, and it does clean your brushes, it does clean them does work but then you have to wash them out because you have to make sure all the vegetable oil is washed out because when you use your brush again you don't want any of that on it <laughs> because
because it doesn't dry. Anyway, I might do a video on it and try out lots of different ways to clean brushes. So I'm using some Prussian blue and some vermilion red and uh, just mixing that up with a knife. You can use any red, it doesn't matter. Just red and blue, red and blue. Throwing a bit of white in there. <laughs> Problem with this vermilion red, the pigment's not very strong. So you need quite a lot. I'm going to go, I'm going to transfer to cadmium red, I think. So I think it's a stronger red. So I think it'd be easier to mix because the pigment's better. <laughs> it's all an experiment until we get the uh, perfect palette. <laughs> I say perfect palette, there's no such thing. We all like to use different colours and have fun with them. So here we go with a fan brush, the number three fan brush. Loading my fan brush full of paint, full of paint. And now using uh, little rocking motions can put it in the clouds. Oh, I've got hiccups. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have had that mocha. <laughs> I got this uh, big cup and I did, did myself a big mocha to relax. So I could relax and watch myself paint and talk about it and try and give you some tips as I'm uh, rocking the brush there. Rocking the brush. Not rocking the boat, just the brush. <laughs> there we go. I really like the fan brush. For a while, I wasn't keen on it because I never really used a fan brush, and I thought it was a bit bit wide. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I'm loving it now. I'm absolutely loving the fan brush. It's amazing what you can do with it, and. Uh, I've been watching uh, Bill Alexander painting. If you've, if you've never heard of Bill Alexander, he taught Bob Ross, uh, and uh, he had a TV show for a long time. And there's some videos on YouTube, and they're fantastic. And I've been watching him use his fan brush, and it, it amazing. So I thought, well, I need to up my game with my fan brush. <laughs> so I've been using it a bit more. So I put more red on my palette, like I said. Vermilion red, because it's a hue, it's not brilliant. It's not it's not strong enough for me. Then again, Prussian blue is really strong, so it probably just needed a lot less Prussian blue. But still. <laughs> so I've gone a bit lighter. I've got a bit of a lighter colour now, a bit more red, a bit more white. And let's uh, dance in some lighter red. You can just see that. It, it's quite a subtle thing, actually. Um, probably should have done it even brighter so you could see it better on camera. <laughs> I really could do with a... Uh, a studio setup rather than using my uh, video cameras. <laughs> I should get sponsored. <laughs> if there's a big company watching and they want to sponsor my video so I can up my game, then uh, please get in touch. <laughs> so here we go. Yeah, I really like the fan brush. I, I quite like um, having the clouds get wider as it goes above you, seemingly above you anyway. And then having the clouds quite faint in the distance and smaller. And that automatically makes you think, well, those small clouds, they're small, so they've got to be uh, quite far away, right? Yeah, they must be. Oh, God. <laughs> My camera's struggling today. 
I put it on uh, autofocus because when I have it on manual, I always forget to set it and then, or I'll set it and then go out of the room, come back, it's turned off. And then I just turn it on and record and I forget to zo when you zoom in, it messes with the focus and everything. So I just leave it on auto because at least I know it will get focus again. <laughs> So yeah, so try and think about that when you're doing your clouds. Think small towards the horizon and bigger, bigger and bigger towards the top of your painting. It, it's a, it's an easy little trick you can do. And then of course think lighter towards the horizon because it's going to pick up more atmosphere and then darker towards the top where it's closer to you and less atmosphere. So using the knife, a little roll of paint, pushing in really hard, <laughs> but not too hard, a little bit hard, <laughs> hard enough for it to work. And just thinking about that top shape, just thinking about the top shape, that mountain mixture, it was just uh, a bit of the vermilion red, the blue, ivory black, I threw in as well. I know some people don't like black, but I don't mind it. Got nothing against it. <laughs> of course, you don't need to have an ivory black. You could use oh, like a blue and a brown that makes a black, or a phalo green and a midnight. No, <laughs> a phalo green and an alizarin crimson mixed together. That makes a black as well. Nice black. Ultramarine blue and burnt umber makes a nice black. When I'm out painting, I do tend to use that because I can switch around the brown and the blue to make the black different. But yeah. And then just pulling out the paint, pulling it out, and then it picks up some of that light color, which is still there. And then you get a bit of a misty effect, which I wanted. The, this, when you're pulling the paint out, this gives you uh, your ideas. You can pull it, you can see the shape that you can create your mountain when you're pulling the paint. It's quite a, uh, it's quite good really. And you do your mountains the way you want. Don't feel like you have to copy. You can change things, go with it. Don't worry about it. Don't get stressed. <laughs> it's one of the things um, that a lot of painters get stressed when they're painting. Uh, and I, I'm, I mean a lot. <laughs> and you don't want to be stressed. There's no point in being stressed. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You've got, you've got to go, well, I say you've got to, you don't have to. I go with the attitude of, let's see what happens. Well, if it doesn't work, oh well, it didn't work. If it works, great. It doesn't, eh. <laughs> we can't worry about it. don't want to get stressed about painting. You want to be enjoying yourself. And there's so many ways to fix a painting that there's no reason to get stressed. Because you can always fix it. If worst comes to the worst, get your knife, scrape the whole thing off, get some baby wipes, <laughs> wipe the paint off, or a bit of paint thinner on a cloth. Although I don't recommend that one, unless you're outside <laughs> or a well ventilated area. Um, and you can just wipe it all off, start again. So, there's my arm. <laughs> Using the uh, detail knife, I love the detail knife, love the small knife. Using very light pressure, just touching and letting the paint just break. Now the paint breaks because the paint is quite thick, it's firm. And also, I'm so light, I've got the lightest touch. <laughs> My touch is really light. and. Partially from doing this and partially because I do Tai Chi 
And Tai Chi makes you really soft. And people think you're really soft and quiet. And secretly you're a warrior. <laughs> So very light, very light pressure. Very light. So don't mess mess around with it too much because then you lose your breaking of the paint. You start smudging it and making a right mess. And I tell you, I've done that a lot. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Even the greatest painter in the world has made a load of bodged up paintings. <laughs> You've got to, haven't you? How can you learn without making errors? I don't know. Don't know if it's possible to learn anything without making errors. We're not a robot. We're, we're still only human. <laughs> so very light pressure, light pressure. Now I've got my highlight coming this side this time. I know um, there's some left-handers out there that will prefer to do their highlights this side, so I thought, I'll do them this side. It's just... Oh, yeah. I just scraped that a little bit as it come round. And I was like, ooh, I like that. I'll do that there as well. <laughs> just creating different shapes. You can do that, no problem. It's interesting how mountains work <laughs> so well with this technique. So I'm throwing in some blue, Prussian blue in with that highlight colour. Bit of white, bit of blue, bit of red. I don't want it to be bright blue. Bright blue highlights. I used to do them. Mm -hmm. They don't look right. Not bright blue highlights. You need them to be less, well, it's a personal thing. I, I prefer them less blue. Sometimes not blue at all. It depends on the feel that you want. If you want it to be cool, cold, maybe blue's a good idea. If you want it to be warmer in the, high, in the shadow areas, maybe you could do a bit more reds or... Whatever you like, experiment, experiment with your highlights and shadows and see what you can come up with, see what you like. And of course, if you want a more of a realistic look, nature is the way to go. Looking, watching films about mountains, <laughs> nature programs about areas, areas in Alaska or chilly. No, actually I'm all right. I've got my coat on. <laughs> so there we go. Nice. We've got a nice mountain going there. I just wanted a nice, simple, distant mountain. It looks like it's coming at us. <laughs> I think I've managed to make something look like it's coming out. Sure, when you do yours, you can make yours better. You can make yours look amazing. A good way to get a bit of inspiration if you're stuck to what kind of mountain you want to do, have a look on uh, Flickr at people's pictures and give you an idea. Or do what I did, just make it up. I'm just going with it. <laughs> like I said, this mountain isn't as strong as some mountains. I've kept that quite subdued. The colours are not very strong, really. Quite weak. But that's good, because that's what I wanted. I didn't want to bring it too far forward. Now using the two-inch brush, I'm tapping. Tapping away. Thinking of the angles. 
you get these things happening like the, that blue that's starting to affect that mountain and that was an accident but i like it it's because i've got the blue all over the canvas it comes through and i like the way it's created that cool glow there and then you can think about what you want in front i've gone into a bit of a sap green a little bit of dark color dark color sap green a bit of cad yellow cad yellow tappy tap tap <laughs> and then tapping away tapping away put some grassy areas or whatever <laughs> whatever you want it to be <laughs> I was thinking like grass going up the mountain, up the side. I was thinking maybe uh, somewhere like Lake District in England, where you get a lot of, uh, you get mountains with snow on them, and then down the mountain it's grassy. It's a real interesting place. <laughs> People uh, don't seem to believe that happens, but it does. So with the fan brush, so this is my my own paint, the uh, soft white, that one. It's my own one that I made. nice soft paint and it makes it easier for this this section because i don't have any mediums on the canvas i wanted just the paint and then using one stroke you can create water thinking about the water coming along and then drop in load the brush again and then she splash she splash. See that? You can do this. No problem. This is easy. Just make sure your uh, white is quite thin. Thinner than out the tube. <laughs> Unless you've got a thin paint like I have. <laughs> if it's a gloopy thin white, then it's perfect. Perfect. But look how much this stands out. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I start getting carried away. You know when you wish you just stopped there? I was like, oh, maybe it's hitting rocks here. Maybe it's hitting this. There, maybe it's hitting this. Let's do another one. <laughs> Can't help myself. You start losing it. And, I, and in my head, I'm thinking, oh, I think I've gone a bit too far there. How can I make it better? And then I thought, ooh, maybe I can have the water going in front of that water. And that'll send that back. And then maybe there's some, you know how the water starts sort of collecting and blobs down together. So I thought I'd tap a few bits of those in. <laughs> and I thought maybe, you know these lines that you get. I was trying to fix that area, look. <laughs> Oh, what a disaster. I went way too far there in that bit. It's one of those happy accidents, though. It actually doesn't look too bad, but when I was doing it, I didn't like it. I thought I'd gone too far. And my original idea was to use the water as a... Uh, backdrop to a tree <laughs> be looking in my picture that was my original idea and uh, yeah that's that's not going to happen and I don't really mind <laughs> because it's just an idea and I don't worry about that so using some burnt umber with a bit of black in it as well just going to start blocking in some rocks 
that to hold this water in. Thinking it'd be quite rocky around here. And we can make big decisions like, oh, how can I hide that mess? Oh, well, we can we can put a big rock there. That'll hide it. <laughs> Amazing what you can hide with big rocks and big trees. So it's quite a soft paint. The brown wasn't sticking very well, so I had to put more on. And you can do that. It's all going to dry together, so it doesn't matter really. I've never had a painting crack on me anyway. Not yet. <laughs> just blocking this in just sealing all this in because I started to think to myself which was my original idea that this waterfall would be going into a cave and creating a cave waterfall I thought I could do a cave waterfall on another painting because I'd quite like that one that idea so I'm going to do that but this is going to be where the water goes into the cave <laughs> And I'm just going with this now. At some point, when I create my idea, it always changes and uh, I don't worry about it. What does it matter? It's my idea anyway. <laughs> do whatever I like. And you can when you do yours. It doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. You, you paint, painting for the love of painting. That's what I do. I paint for the love of it. I love painting. I absolutely enjoy it. Even when I'm stood out in the freezing cold painting an old building, I'm having a whale of a time. <laughs> to be, to other people, they probably think I'm crazy, but to me, it's brilliant. It's funny, uh, when I was painting this old stable, it's a, a real old one, abandoned. It used to be uh, part of a stately home, but the stately home is no longer there. Um, I say abandoned, it's still owned. It's just it's not like it was. All the windows are like bricked up and stuff. So I'm just cutting across, getting a bit of light paint. Well, anyway, there I've stood there painting away. <laughs> And then this guy, uh, on his horse, is riding past me, and he clumps along, and he looks over. A few minutes later, I'm, I'm uh, still painting there, and I see him again, and he's not on his horse anymore, and he's in the, uh, the stable area on the phone looking at me. And I was like, hmm, that's a bit weird. I wonder why he stood there looking at me on the phone. But I just carried on. I wasn't doing any harm. So, I carried on painting away. And then uh, this bloke turned up. And uh, he goes, Morning. <laughs> this is someone else. And this guy, wherever I go, wherever I go painting, he's always there. I, I even drove somewhere once and went to this other ruin. I don't know why I always end up painting ruins. But anyway, <laughs> um, I went to this other ruin and I was painting there. And lo and behold, who walks around the corner? This guy again, the same guy as before. I was like, here he is again. He goes, oh, hello, I saw you painting in the woods the other day. <laughs> there, yeah, oh my God. And uh, he's like, oh, bye. He's like, bye. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I suppose it's like when you go on holiday, you go somewhere, you know, a thousand miles away. I haven't been on holiday for a long time, but <laughs> when I did go on holiday, you're a thousand miles away and you're walking on the beach 
and you see someone you know on the beach and you're like, oh, <laughs> I've come all this way and you're here. <laughs> So if you look at the um, the dark of that rock and then the light of the uh, the waterfall and then behind the waterfall it goes dark around the grassy bits. I had a bit of a highlight here because there's some light hitting it. God, I love using the knife. I tell you the knife and the, um, the fan brush are becoming my favorite brushes. Wait, the knife isn't a brush. <laughs> oh well, we'll keep that between us. <laughs> no one needs to know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm thinking when I'm doing this, um, I'm thinking there's a, you know, there's a round area there. What I think there's a round area there, and I've got to try and create the illusion of that create the illusion that that's round and create the illusion that light is coming in from left to right as well so I've got to think about that when I'm doing rocks see I added a bit of blue in there into that rock and rocks rocks are a bit like clouds you get all kinds of shapes um, sharp ones round ones not round ones. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> so I'm using the one inch brush there and I, I just keep loading a bit of yellow on it. Yellow ochre, cad yellow, sap green. And I'm just tapping there, just tapping, creating just shape. I'm not really thinking about it. I'm just thinking there's stuff growing there. <laughs> I tell you, over the time of painting, I've become so different as a painter. I'm so different to what, the, what I used to be as a painter. My old uh, way of painting was worry. <laughs> I mentioned stress. and uh, God, I remember being frustrated more than stressed because I'd, I'd got all the gear got all the painting gear got the easel and everything and I did a painting and it was awful <laughs> and I was like how could this be how could I not do it oh I added a bit of red in the color I like that it's really nice that is see it adds that change that change and just a bit of different something different it just makes the painting i think i think when you start throwing in little hints of color here and there it just adds something to a painting yeah anyway what i was saying is <laughs> i think we're nearly oh yeah we've got a tree to do yet just checking the uh how long i've got left see if i can waffle on longer <laughs> i could talk forever to be honest about painting so yeah, I just thought I'd put in a couple more rocks there. Like I said, just go with it. If you want a rock, just put it in. If you want to put some little grassy bits in with a liner brush, go for it. Another uh, tip, I've mentioned this before, but just in case you've never heard me say it, is take a photo of your painting and then look at it. Because then you can see the whole thing rather than just sections when you're painting up close. Always give yourself time to sit back and have a look. <laughs> Taking a photo of your painting, you can see your whole composition. And that makes it a lot easier for you to make changes. <laughs> Whee. Let's make a tree with a knife. Look at that. I'm just loading the knife. I'm putting loads of paint on that knife. I'm just pulling it. Just dragging it out. Look. Whee. <laughs> I mean. 
is so much fun. It's like uh, it's like modeling with clay or something, but you're modeling with paint. And I'm just using a knife to just spread it out. You need the paint to be, like I said, quite thick. You don't want you don't want the thin, gloopy paint to that. Um, it won't work. It just won't work. I know I've had uh, a lot of people say I can't get firm oil paint. So, which is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Because I, I, I have the same problem. So I thought, sod it, I'm going to make some. <laughs> And then if I run out, I just make some more, and then uh, happy days. So I'm thinking about making some as well, um, for if if I can work it out, <laughs> if I can uh, get paint in a tube without getting it all over the place, then uh, I might make it available, but early days yet you have to let me know let me know in the comments if you think it's a good idea to have Jason Bowen oils so <laughs> sorry about my uh, fleece top arm but I'm just dragging a bit of a uh, yellow ochre around well I say yellow ochre it's yellow ochre mixed with a bit of green, a bit of brown. And I'm just dragging it around. Just putting it on top of that paint. Just pulling it through. See, I, what I do when I'm doing this is because I know it's going to mix with the undercolor, what I'll do is I'll make it a little bit brighter than I need it. So then when I mix it, it goes to the duller um, colour, which is right. <laughs> if that makes sense. <clears throat> this is a funny looking tree. Speaking of uh, funny looking trees, while I was uh, walking in, in this woods. Oh yeah. Now I'm doing leaves with the knife. I'm just letting paint break on there. It's a big sap green, brown. I think I put more sap green in it. And uh, I'm just going with tree leaf shapes. I'm just dragging it out. This is the first time, I think. I might have tried it before. I can't really remember. I was just playing, really. And I thought, oh, I'll try that. But yeah, I was walking in this, this woods. And there's some really weird looking trees. And while I was in there, <laughs> this owl just flew past and I was like, whoa, wasn't expecting that. A great big owl. But yeah, I took a load of pictures of these trees. So you get some uh, really interesting ones. There was one with hundreds of branches all going in one direction. And they were all quite low as well. It's really weird. Yeah, so that's just dark. It's glaring back a little bit, but hopefully uh, you get the idea anyway. <laughs> and then uh, I grabbed some cad yellow into the paint so I can highlight a few areas. See, so I'm just dragging it in. So we just get a bit of the colour. And when someone looks at it, they'll go, oh, that's a tree. And that, they must be leaves. And your brain just accepts it. <laughs> it just shows that you don't need to go into amazing detail when you're painting. Because your brain just thinks, oh, well, that's leaves. And uh, these light bits. which I maybe went overboard, but I didn't think the green was showing up very well. So I thought, I'll put a little bit more yellow in it and then you'll be able to see it better. So you can. 
And then in my head I was thinking, hmm, what if the sun hits the water as well? And then I thought, oh, I need to lighten up the trunk a little bit as well. So using the knife upside down again, I just put a bit more light on there. So it's just no pressure again. Let the uh, paint just break. You could do full paintings with the knife, no problem. And I thought I'd just scratch in a few sticks and twigs. I Sometimes I put paint on the knife, on the end of the knife, and just push it in or I'll scratch. Whatever you like, just add a little bit of detail. And then, and then if you don't want any of them, you can just put some paint over them, no problem. It, it actually works better on a white canvas than a black canvas, because you can scrape in and reveal the white, which works quite well. Just scrapey, scrapey scrape. But it still works on the black. And then I just hide some of them, hide a bit. And throw in little bits of uh, bit green here and there. 